Hey guys, Pokemon Collectibles here, and welcome to the second deck assessment video. This one, I decided to do this breakthrough theme deck featuring Noivern on the front here. It is known as Night Striker. I chose this one because it's actually my second favorite deck. I like the Noivern in it, and there's quite a few other cards that I'll go over later. But uh, Noivern is the star of this deck. It is the best card, in my opinion, besides Zoroark. But like I said, I'll go over that later. If you guys want to see suggest a deck that I go through. Maybe one that you play a lot, but you don't really, I don't know, maybe not have the hang of it yet, or maybe there's another deck that you want to get better at, or something like that. Just let me know in the comments, and I'll be sure to feature that deck. As soon as I get a feel of it, I like to play the deck a lot, and I've probably played, I don't know, probably hundreds of games with the Galade deck, the Mental Might deck, rather, and I've probably played a few hundred of games with this deck, too, so I'm not saying I'm a master of it, but but I am saying that I do have at least a basic knowledge of both these decks. So I'll do the same with whatever deck you guys request. So be sure to put that in the comments below. As well as if you guys are enjoying this series. Also, if you guys want to uh, give this a like. Then I know to keep up this series. I'll probably go through all the decks anyway. Uh, just in case anybody that is new to the channel is interested in TCG. But anyway guys, let's get into this deck. And I'll go over the basics as well as hopefully some really helpful information for you guys. Number one, main objective slash thing to accomplish for this deck. I've gone over this deck several times now and I'd have to say I can't really come up with a solid main objective slash thing you would like to accomplish with this deck but I guess the best thing I could say is you have three cards in this deck that are powerhouses. Number one is the Noivern that you see on the front of the deck as well as in the deck in the form of a very cool little card. The second would be Zoroark. There's a really amazing Zoroark card in this deck and if if you can get that out, especially if your opponent has a lot of Pokemon on their bench, definitely a great time to use Zoroark, and I can go over more of that later. And then your third powerhouse is probably Gengar, because he has two really amazing moves, so you want to make sure you have them, as well as Cresselia. So I guess four. Four powerhouses for this. Now, the Galadi deck that I went over actually only has two really amazing cards. This deck, however, has four, so it beats it by two. But as long as you have these four and you have them full of energy and ready to go, then you have a much better chance of getting stuff done with this deck. So main objective for this deck in conclusion. Number two, main cards and their functions. So the main cards of this deck, like I've said before, are the four powerhouses of this deck. The first being Zoroark. Now Zoroark has ability called Stand In. This allows you to make Zoroark your active Pokemon once per turn. Now that means that you can attack with Zoroark every turn if you want to, and as long as he stays alive, you can do it. Or I say alive, as long as he doesn't faint, because Pokemon do not die in battles, to my knowledge. <laughs> anyway, there's a second move called Mind Jack, where it's 10 plus. So the plus comes in, however many Pokemon your opponent has on their bench is times 30. So say your opponent has one Pokemon on their bench, that's 40 damage. If you add one more Pokemon to that and your opponent has two on their bench, it does 70. So it does exponentially more damage, and of course if your opponent has a full bench, their Pokemon are not going to have a very good day. So, <laughs> very good card. That's the first one that is a main card of this deck. The second card is Gengar. Very amazing card. It has Sinister Fog. Your opponent's active Pokemon is now poisoned. Put one damage counter on each of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Now that second part is the most important thing about this. Is you put a damage counter on every single Pokemon turn one. Turn two... Well, your opponent already has a damage counter added, so you put three on it the second turn. And I don't mean you add three, I mean it'll have three total. So, very effective move because you combine that with Creep Show. Now, Creep Show, if your opponent's active Pokemon has three or more damage counters, the Pokemon is knocked out. That means it doesn't matter how big and bad the Pokemon is, it could have 50 HP or 150 HP, and it is knocked out, regardless of how strong it is. That's the beauty of Creep Show. 
Creepshow is that if it has three damage counters and you use Creepshow, it is going down. So that's a very, very good Pokemon. The third one is Noivern. Very, very cool card. This one has Tuning, which just shuffles your hand into your deck. And then you draw the same number of cards that your opponent has. So if you have just a few cards and you want to draw something better and your opponent has a really big hand, really good time to use this. Then, once you get three energy on it, you can do Air Slash, which does 120 damage. You need two different kinds of energy on it, though. You need a Psychic and a Dark Energy. So always be sure that if this is going to be your main active Pokemon, that you keep one of each on there so that no matter what the third energy is, you don't need a specific energy for it. It could be either Psychic or Dark, if that makes sense sense. And last but not least, we get to Cresselia. Now, Cresselia is really amazing because of the one move that it has that I like quite a bit called Moonlight Gain. It does 70 damage and it heals 20 damage from this Pokemon. So if you can get this out relatively early in the game where your opponent can't do much damage or if your opponent hasn't really drawn any energy recently and maybe you've knocked out their Pokemon and they're trying to do some lesser moves, some less damage moves, then this Pokemon can pretty much hold its ground, do 70 damage, and heal 20 for every attack. So that's what makes this one very awesome. Besides that, we have Professor's Letter, which is always a good thing to have. You can draw out two basic energy. And if you draw two of these, you can use both in the same turn, so you get four energy. Then we have Reserve Ticket. Flip a coin. If heads, search your deck for a card. Shuffle your deck and then put the card on top of it. So you don't get the card immediately, but whatever card you pick out of your deck, you will be able to draw the next turn. So really good card, especially if you can put something really good on top of your deck. And it says, if you notice, search for a card. It doesn't say like a trainer card or a Pokemon. It's not specific. So you can pick whatever card you want. But I think it has a lower than 50-50 chance to get a heads because I've had a lot of trouble with it. So maybe I'm just having bad luck or maybe it's the 25-75 chance. I don't really know. But it is really hard to get a heads with that. Other than that, Fisherman is a pretty amazing card. You can take four basic energy from your discard pile and put it in your hand. So if you're low on energy and you've had a Pokemon knocked out recently or a couple Pokemon, you can go in your discard pile and take the energy that you had on them. Other than that, it's a few cards that I've been over before, so I don't feel like I have to go over them again. Pokemon Center Lady is in here, Pokemon Fan Club is in here, and Wally is in here, as well as Tierno. So all of those are really good cards. It's not really main cards, but they do help out quite a bit. Number three, my favorite card or cards. My favorite card for this deck is probably tied between three cards. Gengar, Noivern, and Cresselia. And I say that because all three of these are really amazing cards and they all have their contribution to this deck. I think they all have a very important role in it, especially Noivern and Cresselia. But Gengar pulls his weight too. So Gengar because of the Sinister Fog creep show combo. Noivern because of the tuning air slash combo, which Tuning has helped me so many times when I found it difficult to draw energy and that actually helped me draw a whole bunch of it because it shuffles it every time. So even if you get a bad hand the first time you draw, you may get a good hand next time you draw. And then Air Slash, as long as you can keep energy out, which you know you can get tuning going, so you have really no excuse to lose energy playing with this Pokemon. So there's that. And then Cresselia because it does a lot of damage and heals some damage. So it's not just a heavy hitter, it's a healer too. So it's a tie between those three. Those three are my favorites. So I'm going to just settle with that. Number four, the not so important cards of this deck. As far as the not so important cards go, I'd have to say Ralts and Curlia are the top of my list. They're not really all that great in this deck. I guess if you really want to make use of them, you could, but I hardly ever use them, to be honest. I may have used them like once or twice, and it's only because they're the only Pokemon I drew when I first started a game, so I kind of had no choice but to use them. But other than that, I don't really use these too much because outside of the Galade deck, they're not really that great. <laughs> 
The second on the list, or third, depending on how you see it, is probably Inke. It can do up to 40 damage with just two energies, so it's not too bad. But at the same time, I, again, hardly ever use it unless I absolutely have to. Like, it's my only Pokemon. Because I feel like having to do a coin flip for two energies is not really that great, especially if it's 10 times. If it was 20 times, maybe. Maybe I would chance it, but I just typically don't even use this card unless I it's my only option. Other than that, I think that's pretty much it. I mean, all the supporter and item cards you use quite a bit. I would implement most of the Pokemon in this deck, so that's pretty much it. Just Ralts, Curlia, and Inkay. Those three are pretty much the only cards that I don't use. So that's pretty much saying a lot for this deck, that you would use, or at least be able to make use of the majority of the cards in this deck. Number five. Which deck this deck is most effective against, and which deck it's least effective against. Now, I've done my research on this deck, and this is going to sound a little silly, but I think the deck that is least and most effective against this is a fighting type deck. And I say that because of one main reason. There are five Pokemon in this deck that are weak against fighting type, but there's also five that are strong against it, that are resistant against it. Zorua, Zoroark, Teddy Ursa, Ursaring, Inkay, all of those are actually weak to fighting energy. And then Mistrevis, Ghastly, Haunter, Gengar, Noibat. I think that's it. Yeah, all of those are strong against it. It's kind of a weird balance. There's a few that are weak against other things like Electric and Noivern is for whatever reason uh, weak against Fairy type. I think it's because, yeah, he's Dragon type. That's why. But other than that, it's just a, a weird mixture. I guess they maybe made it so that if you go against a fighting deck, you kind of have a chance, fighting chance. <laughs> but because of that, I have to say that the deck that this is most and least at the same time effective against is Basic Orange, just like the Middle Might deck. And last but not least, number six, conclusion and my rating for this deck. In conclusion, for the Night Striker deck, also known as the Noivern theme deck, I highly recommend it to anybody that is starting out and needs a really strong deck, as well as I recommend the Galadi deck for obvious reasons. But I recommend this one, especially if you like to have big powerhouses in your deck. If so, this one has four of them. <laughs> so there's no shortage of really strong cards in this. I highly recommend this if you are a fan of psychic types, as well as dark types, because it has a mix of both. Overall, I'd probably give this deck a 10 out of 10. I know I did that for Galadi deck too, but I promise there are some decks out there that will get a lower rating. But so far, they've gotten a pretty high rating from me because I use these two quite a bit. That's why I started out with these two, so that I could start this series on a positive note so that it doesn't seem like I'm just knocking these decks. <laughs> That's the main reason why I started with these two, so that I would be able to show you guys my favorite things about them and that I don't start out out with like the deck that I hate the most <laughs> because that way I don't know I just don't want to be prejudged I guess so that you think that I'm gonna be like this about every deck that I'm gonna nitpick and be like oh this deck sucks because of blah blah but anyway guys I hope you're enjoying this series so far please leave in the comments if you guys have any comments maybe I left out something about this deck or maybe there's a hidden gem in it the uh, maybe it's a specific Pokemon that has a lot of potential that I haven't seen yet or something of the like Anyway guys, thanks for watching and have an awesome day.